Okay, we have a pretty full episode in this session right here. And if you watched the last episode, you saw that we built out the hierarchy and our nesting system. Now we're going to learn how to actually put that in place and do more than just show it, but actually be able to add to it. And so the very first thing we're going to do is open up our purchases controller. So go to app, then go to controllers, the invoices directory, and then click on purchases controller. Now, one thing we have to do to make this truly nested is we need to change the actual class name. So type in invoices and make sure invoices is capitalized and then type it in exactly like that and so what this is going to do is this is telling the entire system that we're going to be inheriting and essentially we're going to be nested under invoices we're still inheriting from application controller but we're going to be able to work with invoices directly so that's uh, that's the first step and also I'm gonna take out this before action I don't really feel like this is necessary for what we're doing and then come down to new and I'm gonna get rid of this part of it because it's nested we actually have to call the invoice so I'm gonna say invoice equals invoice dot find params and then invoice underscore ID and so what that's going to do is it's going to look at the page and the URL structure and it's going to find the invoice ID and it's going to put that inside of this new method and then we have to create an instance variable for purchase which is just purchase purchase dot new which was there before so now we have both of those items now that we, we're making some changes on the controller but we also have to make some in the view as well so let's switch to that go to views then go to invoices and purchases and now in here we actually want to work on the form so double click on form and you can see that we have uh, our full form everything from the name category quantity etc now there's a number of changes we're going to be making here uh, the very first one is on the first line this is no longer going to be a form for purchase it's going to be a form for invoice and purchase and so get rid of the parentheses and put a block because this is going to work as an array instead of just a regular parameter so uh, we're going to do invoice comma purchase in brackets right there so this is uh, this is just something that you have to put inside the form so it knows what form we're talking about and it also knows the instance variables and they're being passed along uh, the other thing is uh, I'm going to get rid of these validation issues. Uh, we can handle those a lot better way than uh, what the scaffold provides us. So, okay, so we've gotten rid of that. We've put the form for items. And now the next thing we're going to do is remove this invoice call because you see the because there is an attribute for invoice by default rails with their scaffolding engine puts it here even though we never want the user to enter this in because they're just going to click a button and the system's going to know what invoice they are working on so just get rid of this block hit save and that should be all we have to do in this form now there's a couple other spots where we want to um, remove some items click on the edit and to get rid of everything here Hit save, do the same thing for new, and do the same thing for show. And actually, because of the way we're setting this app up, uh, the majority of those won't ever be called and we'll be able to delete them later. Uh, but for right now, we won't worry about it. We're, I'm just getting rid of that so we won't run into any errors. Okay, so those are all done. Those are all cleaned up and refactored. And now the next thing that we're going to do is actually go into 
back into the purchases controller and come down to this create method. Now we're going to be doing a decent amount of work in here. So uh, right below where it says create, create an instance variable called invoice and then a, a call to the model. So a capital I for invoice and then find and then params bracket invoice ID and then the next line is going to be purchase purchase new purchase params just like it is by default and then the last thing is going to be purchase dot invoice equals invoice okay and let's see Okay, and I believe the rest of this, is, oh, uh, actually, no, there is one change. Uh, right now, the redirect here would go to purchase, which would either throw an error or it would be messy. So we want to switch that to invoice, switch this to invoice, and switch this to invoice. Okay. Perfect. So this is what we want to do um, because as soon as the user hits save, we want to be redirected to that invoice. So um, let's see. Okay, so this is everything that we need as far as the backend functionality. Now let's uh, you know add a few things on the view itself so we can create the button. So let's close that out and then go into actually sorry um i want to close out the controller uh yeah we want to be in view and then go down to show for the actual invoice and you can see on the very bottom we have our links or our buttons and i'm going to create one more here and so we'll just do some embedded ruby so percent sign equals link underscore two and I'm gonna say add new item and that's a string comma and then our path is gonna be new uh, invoice purchase path and pass in invoice class pull right Okay, and if you want to know how I knew to do that, uh, it's just because one, I've been doing this for a while and I knew that that's what the uh, route would be. If you are unsure about that, remember we come up right here and you can do rake routes. And all you'd have to do is look at the new method because this is the one we're focused on. So if you see here, you can highlight it all and you can actually see the call for the path is going to be new invoice purchase and then you automatically just know that it says path afterwards. So that's how I got that. Now, how did I know to put a, let me scroll up here. How did I know to put invoice in parentheses and put the instance variable there? It's because right here, uh, you can see right in this slot where it says invoice ID. That means that I know the URL needs to know what that invoice is. And if I don't put it here, then the URL is not going to know where it is. It's going to throw an error and it's going to say, I have no idea what invoice you're talking about. I need more information. And that's what we're doing when we pass this as a parameter. So uh, there's nothing really too magical about that. Uh, the more you do it, the more it becomes natural and you just know, okay, that's what the path is. And you know when you have to pass it something and when you don't. Okay, that was a lot of work. <laughs> so let's see if this works. Okay, we start up the Rails server and let's go take a look at it. Okay, we'll go to our invoices and we'll go on show. Okay, so, so far it's working and we don't have any errors. Um, let me hit control shift R. Oh, sorry. It's always important to save your files. Come back, control shift R, 
and there's our button right here so it says add new item so if I click add new item it gives me the ability to add anything I want so I could say testing again and I could give it my category and a quantity of two hit create purchase there you go testing again my category and two uh, we can add in another one my favorite product category is favorites quantity is seven hit create purchase and there you go and it will just keep on iterating here and so we have a, a what actually looks to be a real looking invoice now and now we have the ability to actually add items dynamically without having to do in the console or anything like that but hopefully you since you've gone through the process you can appreciate how much easier this is after working through the console and knowing okay this is how I set up my relationships in the database and uh, these are how I do the queries because you can see it's very similar in the code itself compared to how it gets done in the console and so it really prepares you to do it nicely and it saves you a lot of time in the long run so congratulations you now know how to add these items uh, as nested attributes and in the next episode I'm going to show you how you can delete these items. So I'll see you then.